So it's all well and good to be able to find the values of the mean, median, and mode, but what do they mean visually? We want kind of a sense of that about our data set. So what we're going to do is build a dot plot here. Now remember, a dot plot is a plot where each individual shows up as a single dot. I'm going to grab my a ruler here. So one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Then for one, we had one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And you have each student's dot representing themselves. And then how many fours? There was just one four, one five, two sixes, and an eight. There we go. That's the dot plot. Okay, so part D is done. We sketched about dot plot. Wonderful. Now, what is the shape of our data? Now, the shape is going to be um, referring to where the tail goes, right? So we can see that the bulk of the data are over here, and there's a tail tapering off this way. So since we have that tail to the right, this is skewed right, right? Because it has a tail to the right. Sorry, my dog is barking. Now, really importantly, we want to label where the mean, median, and mode appear in the dot plot above, describing their relationship to the graph, because we're trying to get this visual sense of what they are. Okay. Well, the mode, <laughs> I think, is the easiest one. So the mode is zero, because zero occurs the most often. You can see it has the tallest bar. So I guess I should put it up here. The mode is zero because it's the tallest. These aren't really bars. This isn't a histogram, but I mean, it's essentially bars, right? So it's the tallest bar, the highest frequency. So let me go put that in. So the mode appears as the um, tallest bar, right? In other words, it has the highest frequency or count. So the mode is really easy to see. All right, now the mean, um, actually, let me do the median next. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in reverse order here. All right, so the median, if you remember, was a middle way spot between a 2 and a 2. So there's six values here, five more here. 6 plus 5 makes 11, 12, 13. The median is actually 2 because 13 of the values are here. I've got 13 dots higher than that value, 13 dots lower than that value. So that is the median. I'll just write a little median right here and then make a note, right? So the median, right, 13 values below it, 13 values, oh, I should write below, 13 values above, right? It's the middle, right? It has half the values below, right? Half the values below and half the values above. I guess that's another way to say it. That's the median. Okay, so let's write that. So it's a space or point. It can be a point, it just isn't in this point, in this particular graph. So space or point with half the values below that point or that spot and half the values above. All right, that leads us to the mean. All right, so I've done median in green. I did the mode in this kind of mauvey color. <laughs> kind of weird. Looks like maroon. All right, so I'm going to do the mean in orange. Right, so the mean right here. Okay, so how can we spot the mean? Well, the mean, the interpretation of it is actually kind of the most important of these three, and it's the hardest to get your brain around. <laughs> so what you do is you imagine that the bottom axis here is kind of like a, um, a teeter-totter or a lever, right, if you take science class. So you imagine this bottom axis right here is a teeter-totter. And the mean is where you would put the fulcrum of that lever or that teeter-totter to get the left side and the right side to bounce. 
So the mean is the balance point. If these were equal weights, let's say this was, um, I don't know, an equal weighted bar, right, equally dense bar, and you set it up with equal weights stacked, like imagine these are Lego blocks, stacked at zero, stacked at one, two, three, right? If you put the fulcrum here, you would get the two sides to balance each other. That's the mean. It's very important, <laughs> right? So imagine it's the fulcrum part of a teeter-totter or a seesaw, depending on. I always called it a teeter-totter in school, right? So it's the balance point of the data. In other words, it would be the fulcrum if all the data, if all the data were on a lever. Um, a balance or lever. So now let's think about this a little bit more and what this shape or how the shape can be affected by having an outlier. Okay, so this is a true story. I actually had a student that had this happen, or I had a class that had this. So I have a student in class, and they inform us that they have 127 pets. Yes, that really happened. Those were real people. <laughs> it was a thing. Okay, so um, it was actually because of a tarantula experiment with their science class. They ended up with a lot of tarantulas left over, and they didn't have the heart to euthanize them. So they ended up with a lot of tarantulas and some cats. There are cats in there as well. Okay, so I've made the dot plot, and you can see, right, this is our old dot plot. And honestly, I didn't cram it as tight as it should have been. It's really got to be packed in there. So you got your 0, your 1, your 2, your 3, your 4, 5, and so on. Okay. So what happens when this student who is an outlier, so let's make it, we can see that dot way over there, there's the outlier, right? Obviously, they lie far out from the rest of the data, lie far away from the rest of the class. All right, so when that happens, right, what happens to the mean, median, and mode? How do they get affected? Oh, okay, well, big time. Okay, so let's see here. If we go back to, well, I can tell you right now the mode isn't affected at all. I mean, you can kind of see it. The mode is still the highest bar, and the highest bar is still zero. So that's easy. But let's look at all the rest of them. Now, how do you do this in StatCrunch? Sorry, I was editing my YouTube video there. So at the bottom of my data set in StatCrunch, so I have all these pet data right here. And I'm going to go scroll down to the bottom. There's the 6, there's the 6, there's the 8. I'm going to put 127 down here. And then I'm going to go to Stat, Summary Stat, columns, and I'm going to rerun pet data with the mean, scroll down a little bit, control click the median, scroll all the way down, control click the mode. So I've got mean, median, mode, I click compute, and sure enough, see, the mode still is zero, not a problem. The median still is two, I'll show you why that was in a second, and the mean becomes 6.89. Oh boy. All right. So let's write these down. So the mean, I guess I did these in blue the other page, so I'm just going to do them again. So the mean is 6.89 pets. That's the one we're going to do in orange. The median is two pets still, right? We didn't change it. It's still two pets. And the mode, it actually did change just ever so slightly, but it didn't affect the number. I'll show you. The mode was zero pets still, right? Those two didn't really change. Okay, let me show you those vis visually as well, okay? So the mode is still here, right? It's the highest bar. So that hasn't af been affected by the fact that there's an outlier way over there to the right. I'm going to turn off the camera a bit. All right, so the outlier is way over there. Mode is still the highest, no problem. Mean got pulled much higher than it was. So it was over at 2.39, which is kind of in here. And we moved it 3, 4, 5, 6. That's the 6 is those two dots right there. So it actually kind of became there. Again, if you imagine it a teeter-totter, 
So that's the mean. The mean is the balance point, which is 6.89, right? It's the balance point. And the median, we can kind of see it in here. It used to be this halfway spot between this two and this two. But now it's actually become this value itself. That's the median. Because that value would have 13 below it and 13 above it. And then it's the one in the middle here. I'll show you on the first page of the notes for the section in a second. So this is two pounds. Okay, so let me show you. If I go back to my original listing right here. Whoop, sorry, my page flew. <laughs> All right, so let me just kind of throw in 127 over here at the end, just so you can see. Okay, so what happens? The median was here, but then with 127 in, oh, I shouldn't have used this color. Sorry, that's the same color that I used for that note up there, and that's going to get confusing. So I'll just kind of put it there in red. So if I add in the 127, the median moves a half spot, if you will, to the next number, which happened to be 2, so it didn't really affect it. So putting that 127 there meant it went from this blank spot here to that number. If I had another outlier over here, let's say I have a student with 11 pets, it would move from that spot to the blank spot between those two. And if I had another one, it would move from that blank spot to that number, and it just kind of moves a half a step, a half a step, a half a step every time. And that's how the median works, right? Because this value, if there's 127 in here, there's 13 numbers there, 13 numbers there, and 2 is the one in the middle. So there's 27 numbers now, but if I put the median here, it has 13 below it and 13 above it still, right? That's the median. So it just moves like a touch. It moves like a half spot over. And now if I had more zeros, it would move that way. So if you had two students more with zero, it kind of nudge its way back down, half spot down, half spot down, it would kind of move over every time. Okay, so what do we notice about this? Well, the mean got changed and the median and the mode stayed the same, right? So the mode and the median stayed the same, which means they are resisting the pull of that outlier. That outlier is very odd. It's a very high number, right? and it's affecting the mean, but it's not affecting the median and the mode, not nearly as much. right? Technically, the mode is a tiny bit affected because it moves over that little half spot, but that's usually not a very great deal. The mean um, was pulled higher due to the high outlier. Right? Having a really big number like 127 made that number become really big. Okay, so what does this lead us to? This leads us to a definition of resistant. So the mean is sensitive to outliers, right? It was pulled because it was sensitive to that number. That number being put into the mix made the mean go really high. I mean, you're, th you're talking about the number of pets per student in this class. This is not a fair number. There were only a couple students that had pets that high, right? But because of that one 127 student, it made it that high for the class. Right? So it's sensitive to that outlier. Right? The median and the mode are resistant. If I could spell the word resistant. Resistant. That's an A-N-T. <laughs> Sorry. My N's, I'm not good about them. I tend to cursivize them in the middle of a word. <laughs> resistant. There you go. So we can make a note, this is resistant, this was sensitive. So the question becomes, which is at the top of the next page, what number is a good representative for this data set? Which measure of center? Because right, all of these are averages, mean, median, and mode. They are all averages. They are all measures of central tendency. So which is the best measure of center? In other words, average. Right? 
That's what measure of center is. It's a number that measures center, right? A number that gives us the average. So which of these three numbers is the best measure of center? And the answer is um, probably the median. Mode wasn't really great either because zero wasn't really representative of that class. So two pets because it resists the outliers and is a fairer representation usually than the mode, not always, but in this case it was. Representation of the data than zero. Sometimes the mode's perfectly fine. Matter of fact, it happens a lot <laughs> that the mode is perfectly fine, but it was not the case in this example. Um, this one was not, mode was not good because mode was zero, which there are a lot of kids in that class, a lot of students in that class that had pets. So saying zero wouldn't be good. All right, so this leads us to our second important point. When the data are skewed left or skewed right, the median is the preferred measure of center. If it's skewed left or skewed right, go with the median. And central tendency means average, right? The middle, that's all it is. It's just a fancy way to say average, middle, or center. That's all it means.